welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. When we were with our party last time, they had opted to split off in several directions to enjoy the sights and sounds of Colby. The Shorting Festival was about to start, and the community was alive in Merriman. Cabe, Lady Arena, and the Waif Karina went shopping, with the Waif discovering the benefits of having money. Bolger and Fargus found a local watering hole and a pretty lass that took an interest in the large ranger. We rejoin with Sister Elaine as she reaches a frontier shrine near the edge of town. Hello, called out the cleric as she knocked on the wooden door of the shrine. A call from the back beckoned her past the rudimentary altar and through a cloth doorway. Sister Elaine peered into the dark room, discovering a pair of shadows near the back. A harried priest hovered over a patient who was lying in a bed. The body quaked despite having several covers over it. Patting the patient on the arm, the holy man told them that they would be right back, and he rose to greet Sister Elaine. Reverend Daughter, as he recognized her accoutrements, it is a pleasure to see you. I am Brother Cistern. How may I help you? As he bowed to the female. Sister Elaine gave him a similar greeting and explained that she was new in town and wanted to check on the state of the church. Nervously looking over his shoulder at the body, Brother Cistern lightly touched Elaine by the arm and escorted her out into the nave to speak with her privately. Who is your patient? she inquired as she was puzzled for the rapid exit. Brother Cistern cleared his throat before explaining to her that the patient was Pastor Lauren and he was on death's door. The acolyte explained that the priest had been out administering to some of the outlying farmers when he was attacked. A group of travelers brought the holy man back to town, but in poor condition. Brother Sestern explained that he tried everything he knows, but sadly lacks the abilities needed to resolve Lauren's condition. He then asked if she could attempt to heal his wounds. A discussion ensued and Sister Elaine began to suspect a toxin was the probable cause of the malady that the man was suffering from. She stated that he was not strong enough to resolve the issue either. The crestfallen man slowly started towards the back as another coughing fit overtook the pastor. Thinking quickly, Sister Elaine recalled the wand of healing that they had obtained in Phoenix. Snapping her fingers, a smile broke over her face. Do not yet give up hope, Sestern. I may have an idea. Racing down the street, back to the Comstock Inn, Sister Elaine headed to where they had been staying. Moving quickly up the stairs, she threw open the door to their shared room and found it in disarray. The pet axe beak was quite upset, and blood covered the sheets of one of the beds. Looking around frantically, the cleric spotted an open window with blood on the sill. A bag on the bed nearby indicated that her personal belongings had been gone through. Moving cautiously around the angry axe beak, Sister Elaine noticed that the bag had contained the Wand of Healing. Looking out the window, she observed a male fleeing across the street towards the revelers. A th thief turned to confirm his escape and Sister Elaine was able to get a good look at him. A large ugly scar adorned his face and he quickly melted into the crowd. Turning back to the axe beak, she noticed that the creature had blood on its beak. <sighs> this is a horrible idea, Elaine. But you don't have any choice, she muttered to herself. Sister Elaine rummaged through the group's belongings before finding some hemp rope. Squaring off with the bipedal creature, she quickly fashioned a tether and approached the angry bird. Using a soothing tone, she moved towards Peepers, calling out its name before draping the rope over its neck. I sure hope this works, she exclaimed as she grabbed the bloody sheet. Holding the soiled fabric to the axe beak's enormous mouth, she spoke to the creature. Peepers, we need to find that thief. The creature gave a loud squawk and led the beast and the beast was led out of the room through a startled common room. The normal patrons dove for cover as the cleric led the three foot bird out in the street where shrieks of fear began to cascade near the business. Peepers, find the man, she ordered, and again the bird squawked loudly. 
Lifting its large head, the creature's appearance caused a great deal of fear to the populace as they dove for cover themselves. Peeper sniffed at the air and gave a loud bark and pulled the tether out of Sister Elaine's hands as it raced down the street. The cleric composed herself quickly before giving chase, yelling for people to get out of the way, which wasn't a problem. As Bulger and Fargus stepped out of the tavern, they heard a shrill whistle. Turning around, the tiny waitress skipped over to them. Where are you two going? She asked, coyly, staring into the ranger's eyes. A moment of silence set in, and the gnome sailor cleared his throat before pointing out that <clears throat> we, we are just going to find our friends and go meet up with them. His words fell on deaf ears as Winnie and Fargus stared deeply into each other's eyes. Bulger shook his head at the enamored pair and waited for one of them to speak. The awkwardness was broken as people began to dive for cover, screaming. The moment broken, all three looked out into the street as a large feather bird ran by squawking loudly, sending people skittering out of its way. At some point, it had ran through a colorful banner, which was still being dragged behind it. Fargus and the sailor stared wordlessly, watching the creature run past. A moment later, a dirty cleric was in fast pursuit, yelling, Peepers! Peepers! The pair again watched as Sister Elaine ran by, unaware of her associates. A few moments later, the ranger started to speak, but stopped as Karina, Gabe Silverton, and Lady Irena had all spotted the chase and jumped into the fray as well. Bulger took off after the group, leaving Fargus standing with Winnie. He looked down into her eyes and began to speak before noticing her enormous father coming out to see what the clamor was about. He managed a weak grin before the waitress shoved him off in the direction of his cohorts. As Fargus nearly fell off the small porch of the tavern, he began to sprint, quickly passing by the squat sailor who was clearly not used to running. Almost a block ahead, the large man caught up with the rest of the group and they finally stopped running. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.